Good afternoon, everybody. This is Steve Fletcher with a trumpet for my people, and I'm here with my 222 brother, Joseph Aquaviva. The 222 crew, uh, we're back, and uh, God has opened up some serious gold mining today. Um, you guys are really going to be amazed at what the Lord has revealed to us. There's going to be no doubt how clear everything is. Uh, we cannot say at this time if this is an exact day that things will happen, but there is serious uh, information coming forward here. And um, so as we search for the day of the rapture, as we search for the time of our gathering, we, um, we are patiently waiting and uh, we continue to search. So the Lord told us to... Um, to occupy until he comes and uh, we can't put this away. I was going to go down earlier and uh, have breakfast. I got so much on my plate here. So many things we're watching. I couldn't even eat. And uh, so I want to give Joseph a time here an opportunity to, to share a little bit too. And as we get started, uh, good morning, Joe, how are you doing? Uh, good morning guys. How's it going? Good to see you. Uh, sorry about the technical difficulties yesterday. I had to run outside to my car because I got three little kids and they make a lot of noise. So I figured I would do that. But I'm back inside today. So hopefully the connection is a little bit better. You can hear me a little bit better because we got some really big stuff to go over. Um, you know, we never uh, set guaranteed dates, but uh, we're definitely watching this weekend, possibly for the rapture. And uh, wow, just amazing stuff me and Steve have found here this morning and last night. And um, guys, um, you know, like I said, I don't set dates, but I would be surprised uh, if we're still here Monday. I'll put it that way. So got some good stuff. <laughs> Me too. OK, well, we're going to get right into this now. We've got a thing that's that's happened here that's kind of opened up an understanding. And um, e even in Gematria, Gematria key is 115, right, Joseph? Right. Yep. Gem Gematria key is 115. Well, something has uh, also, sparked. Heaven's is 115. Heaven's key. Heaven's key. Too. And something was connected to the Gematria key. Wasn't it that the same too? They Heaven's both key. 115. Yep. Uh, okay. So Gematria we got the. Key, Heaven's key are both 115. Yep. Both Gematria key and Heaven's key are 115. So we've had some things here. And if I go ahead and do. Um, all right, so I've got a I've got a, a list of tabs open here on my on my desktop, and we're gonna go through step by step how the Lord opened up this uh, information to us. Okay, and the Bible says that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every matter shall be established. Okay, so Joseph and I are two witnesses. We've got, and we're not only two witnesses; we're the two 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 witnesses, right? So we're, we're a triple confirmation of the two witnesses <laughs> and, and, uh, and then, and then things that come together, you know, we don't see one thing happening at the same time, but if you see multiple things happening in the same line of thinking, then you have this, this sequence of events and sequence of information that, that kind of opens things up. And so what we have here is the other day. This all got started because the other day I shared about Barack Obama sharing uh, a, a, a conversation about uh, the 11 year anniversary of the Affordable Care Act. And he was sharing that at, on March 22nd, which is the day of Skull and Bones. And then the time of it was 1.15. Okay, I didn't even focus right. on the time of 1.15, yeah, but- I wanna mention one thing, one thing there. Um, as you mentioned, Skull and Bones Day at 115 in Gematria, Skull and Bones Society equals 115. And it was on Skull and Bones Day. But go ahead. I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah. And so we've got all of this stuff that is starting to come together. And then Joseph uh, commented on my video, either on Facebook or on YouTube, about the importance of 115. And some things began open up, up opening up there uh, with, that, with that information. Then... Two days later, or a few days later, on the 25th, okay, Joe Biden's first news conference was also at 115. Okay, so something's going on here that Obama's 
meeting was at 115. Uh, Biden's meeting is at 115. Then this information that Joseph sent to me about simple gematria 115 that was the that was what he had said simple gematria 115 dr fauci's 115 new normals 115 okay so yes, is sir. the yeah and there's going to be a lot of things we're going to show uh down the road here uh you know all of these things that we've got a special a special surprise at the end okay about 115 and <laughs> we just found joseph just found this and uh I think it's going to blow you guys away right there at the end. We're going to save that nugget. Keep Good everybody, idea. keep everybody watching till the very end. <laughs> okay. That's the gold. We've got, we've got gold. We're going to be sharing with you guys. Okay. So we've got something's going on here. Is there, is there a message about 115? Freemasons, Dr. Fauci, new normal. Now. Okay. I'm going to go over here. And I want to show you the Economist magazine cover from 2015. And here we have hit something very important. And I think that the Lord has given us understanding, something that, that has been, people have been searching for this type of understanding for a long time, ever since the Economist magazine came out. Okay, so we've got, number one, we've got the, the, whole, the whole cover the whole cover showed this whole crew of people. Obama was in the middle. One thing I noticed is that Trump's not in there anymore, which is kind of the situation right now. He was very important for four years, but he's not there now. And he's not in this picture. But Obama's in the front and center, okay? And Angela Merkel, and there's bombs going off down here. There's a nuclear football. And, well, you, we've got this picture here with Alice. Alice in Wonderland. And we've got two markers. Look like they could be possibly uh, earthquake markers, 11.3 and 11.5, or they could be dates. Or they could be times, like 115. See? 115. But the other thing is that, and Joseph pointed this out to me that I hadn't noticed, is that the 311 was the beginning of the pandemic last year. March 11th. March 11th. That so, day as 11.3. Yeah, March 11th. So what, what is going on here? So this is important. Okay, we've got this situation here with Alice in Wonderland. We've got this ball here. We've got the 11115, it's 115. Okay, are they speaking a message about what is coming? And this is like, they're pushing it because this week there were two events about 115. So there's, they're pushing this idea. All right, now I want to show you something that together, both Joseph and I, we looked at different parts of this. And this is why I did not want to do this video alone. I wanted to bring Joseph in because, um, I mean, this is, I did not get this myself. And uh, both of us are working together on getting, on putting this piece of information together. So that's why I wanted to do another uh, a Zoom call. And even, even from yesterday, when I first contacted Joseph to today, all kinds of information has come in. So this like is, has just been an extreme blessing to be able to contact Joseph and to work together on this and just to see things that we weren't seeing by ourselves. And the Lord is, is uh, leading this. So, okay. And um, so I want to show this part of I pet goat. I want to show you a couple sequences, but I want you to see where Bush becomes Obama and then Obama becomes Alice. It's the change of scenery within this. Okay, so let's watch this part. Okay, the, uh, Obama or, or Bush becomes Obama. And now we've got Obama winking here, okay? Now and watch he's this. Graduating. And he's graduating. He's to the next 
going to the, you see his hat there. He's going to the next level as uh, as the Antichrist. He's going from the sixth king to the eighth king. Yeah, and just like it says right here, evolve, e evolution. Yep. Evolve. Okay. So Obama's getting ready to evolve. And all right, now watch the time on the iPad code. Okay, here it is, 111. Okay, what are we watching? We're watching 115. Okay, we've got all this information about 115, 115, 115. Here's 115, here's 115. Now this is the connection to Alice at 115. Watch what happens here at exactly 115 of iPet Goat. Watch this. Okay, I, I, let me stop it at 115. There you go. Okay, so Obama, it goes from Obama to Alice. <laughs> exactly at 115. Amazing. Uh, and so here, okay, so here is some things that opened up. Now I want to share a quick piece of information about this. Let me run this. Uh... Okay. We see Alice. Now, I hadn't heard this too much before that this could be Alice in Wonderland, but I, I went and did some searching. Okay. And I found this piece of information here. So I, I'm sharing this with you guys because I think it's very important for us to, just as I said at the beginning, you know, two or three witnesses. You know, every matter shall be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. These are not private interpretations that we're the first people to see, you know, but we can go and we can see what other people have thought about these, uh, these things. And if there's confirmation coming from another, you know, that gives more weight to what we're sharing. Okay, so I want to just share a little bit of this with you guys. The Open Scroll blog. Part one, I pet go to golden magic circle. Okay, and he's looking at this as a golden magic circle. This is a coven, and there's 12 there, plus, uh, plus Alice is 13, and this is a witchcraft uh, circle. A viral video titled I pet go to from Heliophant features a broad range of occultic imagery to tell a complex and highly stylized story about the approaching dawn of the new age. The VC provided his interpretation in a recent post, the esoteric symbolism of the viral video, I Pet Goat 2. There's plenty more that could be said about it, but I just want to touch fairly lightly on it to seg into a post about the London Olympics, then perhaps follow up with a few more insights from the featured scene. Several magic circles are evident in London and in the Olympic Park within which ritual magic is being and will be performed. I want to use one of the scenes from I Petco to introduce the magic circle. So I'll focus on that, okay? And uh, it goes on to say, this is no witchcraft manual. Some detail in the description is necessary for educating about how to identify the magic circle. So check with the Lord about whether this post is for you. If there's any doubt, skip it. Okay, now here is the information. The magic circle is the basic fundamental of witchcraft. It will usually be a circle on the floor or ground that is generally visible and four elements will often be represented in some matter in the direction of the cardinal points of the compass. There's a high degree of flexibility in the construction, <clears throat> which is why I'm being so broad in the description of the appearance. A blonde girl <clears throat> modeled on Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland sits on the floor in a meditative position within a circle painted in gold. The circle pictured isn't the ideal circle in size, but it is appropriate for the intent of the video. Several other items featured in the setting identify it to us clearly as a magic circle. Okay, so he's sharing with us about this idea of this being a magic circle. Okay, then we have this connection to Alice and a ball at the feet. Okay, so what happens in I Pet Goat if we roll this tape? There 
there's the ball at the foot. There's a ball at the foot. Alice. Okay. Alice was presented. Okay. The whole thing about this is that at 115 exactly, Alice entered the picture. Okay. At 115. Okay. So that opens up. Do you want to share anything there uh, up until right there, Joseph? Well, one thing I did want to mention uh, back about The Economist magazine, um, we know they put their hidden codes in The Economist magazine. In Gematria, The Economist magazine equals 222. Hidden codes is 222. Barack Obama, the Antichrist is 222. So that's just one thing I wanted to cover about The Economist magazine. Um, but as far as uh, the 115 mark, um, I mean, there could be no two ways about it. They definitely put that there for a reason. Um, mo most likely, um, you know, because Lucifer is 115 and Obama is Lucifer. Um, I think we've established that. And um, also, you even mentioned the word occultic. In Gematria, occultism is 115. Um, but yeah, you're, you're doing a great job. I'm, I'm on point with everything you've said. It's just... Uh, it's all it's all connected and the, the ball at the foot and that foot there I do believe is also Obama's foot and it's on a coin there but um but yeah I'm in agreement all the way up with what you said great stuff okay now okay and this is just going to get deeper and deeper and deeper because we've got some serious connections here now okay we've got the connection to Alice and front and center right behind Alice right is this is the rabbit Okay, now, right. and I, I, I was going to stop and show this when I played that clip, but if we go forward here, and it, when it goes, oh, wait, okay, wait, let me uh, turn on the sound again. That exit sign there, too. Yeah, there's an exit That's sign, the rabbit, and then we got, we're going to move this forward, and when it goes dark... See, the rabbit is the one that's still highlighted. Everything else goes dark. Alice and the rabbit. Okay. So this is key to what we're going to see next. Alice and the rabbit. All right. Now, okay. Now I want to go to, if we look at CERN, okay, we're going to see that at CERN, there is an Alice experiment. Okay. And I, I was searching this. I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't even know to look for this. But as I went to look for CERN, and I don't, I don't even remember how I opened this up, but I, I ended up finding this. Alice Got CERN. It. Huh? Huh? Led you there, Steve. Thank well, God you, led you there. Well, I think God <laughs> led me, but I, there, was, there was like a line of thinking. Why? why I ended up getting here. But anyway, I, I ended up searching about CERN and I somehow put in the search Alice and CERN together and all of this stuff came up. So I've got, what I want to do right now is I just want to give a, a basic overview of, um, well, this information so people can search this and understand this for themselves. Okay, I, I can't give you a full uh, explanation and go in depth about the history of Alice. Some of this was uh, the Alice experiment six years ago, the Alice experiment, some of them goes back Alice in Wonderland, this is CERN, Alice in Wonderland nine years ago. Okay, so this is not new information. So I want to just right. give people Alice gets beam CERN 11 years ago, see? All right, but there is one piece of information here that connects us with the number of 115, Alice Experiment. This, is, this video was put out directly by CERN. The BE in the, in the title stands for Beyond Einstein. BE 151 Alice experiment. So here we have Alice again with the 115, the 151 or the 151 or the 115. Okay. Now this is from CERN itself. 
Okay, now we're gonna see the connection to the rabbit. Like I said, this is CERN. Now watch what happens. They're gonna present to us the Alice experiment from CERN themselves. Interesting. This must be where Alice lives. Okay, so no question about it that CERN is presenting Alice connected to Alice in Wonderland. There is an absolute connection. CERN is presenting this. That is Alice in Wonderland right here, okay? Do you see? Now let's go on. Now the other thing about this is that who's doing the presentation? It's the bunny, okay, the bunny. Remember? Alice and the bunny, okay. Let's go on here. Well, my ears and whiskers, what a huge hole. I wonder what's down there. <coughs> Excuse me, have you seen Alice? Yes, it's over there. That's not Alice. What is it? It's a new experiment we are building to understand the formation of matter during the birth of the universe. My whiskers, what on earth for? The Big Bang gave birth to the universe and set free enormous amounts of energy, which materialized as tiny particles known as quarks or electrons. I can't see any. Can I eat them? No. Quarks and electrons form all the matter which is around us. Atoms, stars, our planet and us. And what is puzzling about quarks is that they always appear in pairs of two or groups of three, but never alone. We physicists call this effect confinement because a quark is forced to live in little communities of two or three, but it never appears alone. Hmm. Yes, but we think that this is only true for our cold universe as it is today. A couple of millionth of a second after the Big Bang, the universe was so hot that quarks were actually free and formed a kind of cosmic soup that was all around. And we want to go back in time and recreate this cosmic soup and understand how it materializes into particles. Hmm, what for? To understand how particles were formed, why the universe is as it is today, and eventually why we exist. Hmm, my whiskers, how do you do that? We take two lead atoms and peel away all the electrons. So all we have left are the pure bare lead nuclei. Then we accelerate these nuclei to enormous speeds, close to the speed of light, and force them into a head-on collision. In such a collision, we can concentrate an enormous amount of energy, or heat up matter, close to the temperature of the Big Bang. This way, we hope to form this soup of free quarks for a short moment before they recombine into solid particles. Hmm. So you want to rerun the Big Bang right here? Yes. By taking this nuclei, accelerating them to enormous speeds and forcing them into a collision, we can actually rerun the Big Bang, but on a laboratory scale under controlled conditions. A kind of little bang for use at home. Big detectors like this one, which is called ALICE, allow us to see all these particles in order to understand what's going on. Well, my dear Paws, where do you get your bullets from? We get them from a new accelerator CERN is building at the moment, the so-called LHC. This machine will provide the most energetic particle beams in the world and is being installed right there. Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be too late. I must find Alice. We have a meeting with the King and Queen of Hearts in a minute. The Queen will be furious. She can be terrible, you know, terrible. I must go quickly. Okay, so like I said, um, I, there's no way I could get into a, a huge long uh, description of 
Alice and everything that it entails. But right here, we have a video done by CERN. It's connecting Alice in Wonderland. It's connecting the rabbit. It's connecting the number 115 by the title of the video. Okay, it's by the experiment number, all right? And it is um, showing us the purpose is to recreate the Big Bang, okay? So this is all coming directly from CERN. Now, there are other videos about this. This video goes into the, the Large Hadron Collider, the ALICE experiment. Um, I'm not gonna show this right now, but I can leave this link for you. And um, we can, you know, I just wanna open things up so people can see more what CERN is trying to do, how it's all connected to Alice, how it's all connected to the, the bunny rabbit by CERN themselves. What, what did you think about, uh, what did you think about that, Brother Joseph? Oh, I mean, as you saw, that video was from 2007. So they've had uh, these plans in the works for a while. Um, yeah, I think uh, Alice, uh, no doubt, definitely is connected um, with all this. They're putting her everywhere. And, um, you know, me, I'm a numbers guy, obviously. Um, and one thing I wanted to mention before I forget, in English Gematria, um, Alice in Wonderland and Barack Hussein Obama have the exact same Gematria. And there's no way that's a coincidence on top of all of this stuff. But yeah, in, in English Gematria, Alice in Wonderland equals 978 and Barack Hussein Obama, 978, exactly the same. But, um, but yeah, amazing stuff. Wow. That's, you know, so anyway, all of this information that we're sharing about uh, this connection to Alice, what, where is it going? What does it mean? What does the 115 mean? And um, let me go back to uh, sc screen sharing here. And where are we going to go next with this? Okay. I shared yesterday about, we've got a lot of the Gematria connections that uh, Brother Joseph has shared. And then I saw this, Strong's 115 is a setting aside, this is in the Greek, a setting aside, an annulment, a nullification, or an abrogation. Going on to read the, the full definition is properly, it's annulment, which is rendered no longer in effect, literally no longer having a place, okay? I shared a video yesterday about even Klaus Schwab thinks we are at a rapture point, and he was sharing about Klaus Schwab is the president of the World Economic Forum. He's sharing about the Great Reset, Okay, and then within this, he goes on to say this. I'll just play this real quick. It's a 28 second clip. Um, when we look at the tremendous challenge which we have uh, in creating this uh, great reset, Republic, um, I think uh, we, we are at a, at a rapture point where of, um, I think uh, we, we are at a, at a rapture point. Okay, so he thinks we're at a rapture point and he's talking about the Great Reset. Well, this is exactly what 115 means in the Greek Strong's Concordance. And Just, I have one thing to add while you're talking about a Great Reset. Uh-huh. Um, in Gematria, a Great Reset equals 474, like Barack Obama, when you spell it B A R A Q, like Luke 10 18, lightning falling from the heavens. So they have the same gematria, a great reset, and Barack Obama. Also, 474 is fallen angel, the phoenix, and the angel of Satan. They're all 474, just like a great reset. So I just wanted to throw that in there while you're talking about it. And yeah, and so I mean, it, between, between the connections of gematria connecting the Antichrist, connecting all of their plans. The, even the strongest concordance gives us the understanding of 115 being annulment, nullification, abrogation, to set aside the great reset, okay? 
So I think that's another side of this that gives us this uh, understanding. All you right. know what now, just popped into my head about uh -huh. 5 real quick? Uh -huh. Ephesians, Ephesians 5.11 about exposing the darkness. So there's another 11.5, uh, Ephesians 5.11. Uh, let's let's go ahead and pull that up. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of my favorite verses. Oops. Let's see. So 115, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather repro reprove them or expose them. Or, or expose them, yep. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Amen. Yep, and and uh, three twenty two, in Strong's. Strong's three twenty two. Is backwards. In the Hebrew, oh, wow. backwards. Yep. See, and that's everything that they show. They show it one way. They show it another way. They've got on here. Yep. They've got one uh, one five. Uh, on here, they've got the time 115. Then on the Alice Collider, they've got the 151. See, oh, yeah. but they, it's the same they, numbers. They, sure. Yep. Any way you uh, do it. So their number is doing things back, backwards and forwards. And, you know, they, they switch it up. Great point. It's the sa same code, you know. Okay. Now I want to go into. Um, something else is there anything else you wanted to share at this point um i still um, i just wanted to mention um real quick for just for the people that aren't too familiar with ipet goat 2 the people that might think that uh the video doesn't have any any concrete you know to it um i just want to say that not only um that video came out about seven years ago right and trump was elected like four or five years ago and that film shows trump about six times. So I just wanted to mention that. And also in Gematria, I pet goat two equals six, 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 you know, basically revealing their plans they call it lesser magic. They believe if they show you um, ahead of time, you know, it, it adds value to their power or whatever. But that's all I wanted to mention about I pet goat. But uh, that's it. Okay, so I want to go on and share again, my screen and sh I want to show um, okay, we're going to get into now the, the, what, the meaning of 115, okay? We've, we've seen this so far. They had their meeting at 115 for uh, the 11th anniversary of Obamacare. Joe Biden's first uh, conference was 115. All the connections to 115 here. We've got uh, the 115 connection here exactly with Alice in the iPad code. Okay, exactly at 115, Alice appears. We've got um, connection to CERN and Alice and 115 and the rabbit. Okay, and what what is what is all this? Okay, if we're if we're going to go forward here and see the connection between Alice and the rabbit, does the 115 connect us connect us to Easter? And this is where I think we're seeing both Joseph and I are seeing how this could possibly be connecting us to Easter. And the understanding is the Hebrew calendar 115. Okay. So now I want to share with you this Bible code theory research video. We're not going to watch the video itself. I'll leave the link for you. Everything I'm sharing here, I'm going to leave links for you. Okay, so you can search this out more in depth for yourself. But I want to share this video. Uh, not the video, but I want to share the information from this video with you. And I was, I was really, really moved by this. Because this... When he put forth this video, he put forth this video with such a strong, moving 
call to be ready now because he has received this code as a this is going to happen moment. This is no longer about warnings about into the future. We've got something that is going to happen. And he put even in the description of this of this video, he put access term. This is not an if warning. This is an is warning and a formal declaration from the most high Yahuwah in the name of he who is the spirit of prophecy. What did he find in this code? He found the year 5781. He found Pesach, which is Passover. He found Abib 14, which is the date of Passover. Nisan 14, Abib 14, Passover 5781. And there were two Bible verses connected to this code. And two verses came linked to this. And this is key in the understanding of how important this warning is, how precise this code is. And two verses came forth from this code. Psalm 78, 49, and 50. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to pestilence. And when, when he shared about this and he talked about the COVID, the COVID-19, right? The pandemic that's already been upon the world for one year. When you consider the four years of the fig tree, and this is my uh, addition to what he shared and what came to mind when I saw this connection to pestilence, was that if you go from 2017 the year of uh, Israel's 70th anniversary, really from Pentecost of 2018 to Pentecost 2017, Pentecost of, uh, of 1948 to Pentecost of 2017, we've got the end of the 70 years. And then we've got the Revelation 12 sign, the great American eclipse and all the confirmations that started coming, huge confirmations that started coming in 2017. And then you've got the, the parable of the fig tree which is not only the, you know, the fig tree generation, which would have been at the end of the 70 years, but then we've got the parable of the, of the fig tree, which talks about the three years and a year-long extension, right? So there's a year-long extension. So you've got 2017 to 2018 to 2019 to 2020, right? Three years. And then you've got the beginning of COVID. You know, it's interesting about that verse also. I see the word wrath in there. In Gematria, God's wrath is 115. Just another confirmation. It's all, it's, it's, I mean, the, the, the clarity of what God is trying to say is, is unbelievable. And so it's connected to the pestilence. And now you have the parable of the fig tree at the end of the third year. The, 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 the tree was going to be cut down, but they came in and they, they, they uh, interceded over the tree. They interceded over the vineyard and they said, no, give us one more year. The caretaker of the vineyard pleaded with the, with the owner of the vineyard to give him one more year. And he said, okay, I'll give you one more year. And if there's no fruit at the end of one more year, I'm going to cut it down. Right. And I mean, we've got 2017 was huge. And then we've got three years, we've got the, the whole year. And now what has happened? Has there been true repentance in the world based on a worldwide lockdown that took place already one year? OK, it's been over one year from worldwide lockdown. Schools, are your are your kids back in school yet, Joseph? No. Nope. OK, no, yeah, we're here. Yeah, our schools are still closed here in Mexico. All right. Yeah. So 
the 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 park in downtown in our in our downtown square they still have not turned the lights on you're not allowed to oh. go out at night even go to the, sit in the park they have all the lights off that's what i mean the world is upside down it's it's rapture time for sure <laughs> so i mean we, you've got that whole connection between the three years so the the this bible code brought forth the year passover the exact date of passover and then these two bible verses was the first bible verse was from psalms he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them he made a way to his anger he spared not their soul from death but gave their life over to the pestilence the second bible verse that came out in that bible code was daniel 7:19 and look at how clear this is as well. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. Okay. I mean, this is a very powerful message between both of these Bible verses and the exact date in this code, this, this is why the guy who received this code, Bible Code Theory Research, I mean, he went a step above anything else he had ever done before. And he said, there's, there's no doubt about it. This is a word from God. This is written in Bible code. Okay. Now, I can't guarantee that. I don't think anybody can guarantee it. You know, we, we, that's not the point trying to guarantee it or say it has to be all i can do is pass on information that we're seeing pass on information that other people are seeing and the 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 you know we are at a point where the wrath of god is going to be poured out and the world is about to plunge into darkness there's no doubt about it is this the exact date i can't say that but this this uh, this code came out with an exact date on it and it was very, very powerful. And uh, that's the warning, okay, that he was sharing. Now, I want to go on and talk about Nisan 15. Because Passover is Nisan 14. The day after Passover is Nisan 15. And that on the Hebrew calendar, this is the day they cross the Red Sea, okay? So they're, they're pushing their 115 code. They're pushing their Alice in Wonderland, Big Bang renewal moment. Okay. All of this stuff that they're showing on their end is their biblical understanding. Could this be connecting us to this year, Passover, Nisan 15, the day of the crossing of the Red Sea. Now, the other thing about Sunday, March 28th, is that on the, that's the Hebrew calendar. Okay, Passover on the Hebrew calendar is Saturday. Nisan 15 is Sunday. On the Gregorian calendar, it's Palm Sunday. So, I mean, all Christians everywhere should be expecting the arrival of the Messiah on the same day he showed up the first time he came. Okay. He came on Palm Sunday and rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and revealed himself as the Messiah through the prophecy of Zechariah. And that was in Zechariah, they just found the Dead Sea Scrolls. It was in Zechariah that was written about the donkey, about Palm Sunday. Okay. I mean, how many warnings do we need? And now we've got this, is this going to be just one more year again? One more Easter year? Let's all, let's get together and pray in our family. And let's just all enjoy Easter and have fun. And hey, what, what do we got with the Easter? We got, ra we got, we got the rabbit. Okay. Here you go. Here's your Easter rabbit connection from Alice in Wonderland. 
What board are you you're on that slide? I want to real quick. If you're using the people as months, right? You see Trump there with the Trump hands down in the triangle and the Trump hair, the third figure from the left. Okay. Right. Well, in between that third and the fourth figure, you have an exit sign, almost like, like a rapture, like the bride exits right between the third and the fourth month, which would be the end of March, beginning of April, right in that section. And it's interesting, um, the shape under Trump's hands is an is a M shape almost for March. And it's just interesting, it's got an exit sign right there where we're looking at. So I just wanted to mention that while you got that screen pulled up. And the next month is April and it's blotted out and it's all written up there and I mean, chaos. <laughs> This looks right. like the chaos is going to hit right here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we've got the Alice in Wonderland. We've got the, the rabbit. All of this connected to 115. We've got the Hebrew date of Nisan 15. This is the day everybody crossed across the Red Sea. They left Egypt. This is the second exodus, guys. I mean, this is what the Lord is showing, I believe, the second exodus. Exodus. Yep. Palm Sunday. Now, why would I watch the Gregorian calendar if I'm looking at the Hebrew calendar of Nisan 15, Palm Sunday? What is there a way God could show me that this is a significant connection? Well, if we go to the Strong's, the word for watch in the Strong's Greek concordance is Gregorio. Okay. Watch the Gregorian calendar. Okay, you've got the connection here to the Hebrew calendar, but you've got Palm Sunday. Is there a day that could be more significant than actually the day Jesus came the first time and revealed himself? You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. yep. See, there, there's there's power in this. The ne the next thing I want to share with you is what Trump said last year. About Easter. Ultimately, the goal is to ease the guidelines and open things up to very large sections of our country as we near the end of our historic battle with the invisible enemy. We're going for a while, but we win. We win. I said earlier today that I hope. Notice when he says we win, we win. He livers like a snake. Dr. Fauci mm -hmm. is 115. Yep. We can do this by Easter. The Freemasons 115. I think that would be a great thing for our country and we're all working very hard to make that a reality. We'll be meeting with a lot of people to see if it can be done. Easter is a very special day for many reasons. For me, for a lot of a lot of our friends, that's a very special day. And what a great timeline this would be. Easter is our timeline. What a great timeline that would be. Timeline. My wow. first priority is. Is that, I mean, what did he, let's just repeat that last one here. Great timeline that would be. Would be. And what a great timeline this would be for many reasons. For me, for a lot of, a lot of our friends, that's a very special day. And what a great timeline this would be. Easter is our timeline. What a great timeline that would be. Okay, guys. I mean, that is nice. very, very, very clear. <laughs> Easter yep. is our timeline. What and a one great thing I'll mention about Trump and the rabbit. Um, do you remember every time they had Easter at the White House, they always had this big bunny show up in the costume and it was always kind of creepy looking. But in addition to that, I don't know how familiar you, how familiar you are with the movie Donnie Darko, but in the movie Donnie Darko, uh, Donnie is actually the Trump character. And the whole movie is kind of about this rabbit called Frank the Rabbit, him and Donnie, and just another rabbit connection with Easter, possibly. So I wanted to mention that, too. But wow, I'm, that's amazing. <laughs> there is a timeline. There is a timeline. That's amazing. Wasn't that an amazing quote? Yep. It was a year ago, and you know, it could have been the one-year warning because there was no way they were going to get everything done by by easter last year right yeah so yep. you know remember the great reset 115 
Okay. A couple of things that Joseph sent to me about uh, Freemasons. It's 115. Masonic 115. Yep. Masonic Skull and Bone Society is 115. Alice Mad Hatter, or I, I redid that and I had Alice Had Matter. It's the same yeah. letters. Alice Had Matter. It's 115. It's all connected to the CERN Collider and the Alice Experiment, and it's 115. Lucifer is 115. CDC is 115. Gematria, simple Gematria, Passover. Here is the big one that... <laughs> The gold, we, we struck gold on this one. The cherry on top. This is the cherry on top, Passover is 115. Yep, A is one, B is two, C is three. You just add up the value of each letter. Simple gematria, 115, amazing. 115, passing also, over. Lion of Judah is 115. Like the hat, Lion of Judah, 115. Lion of Judah, a setting aside, passing over, annulment, nullification, abrogation, the great reset. I shared this earlier about uh, uh, Klaus Schwab, the great reset. We shared about Ephesians 5.11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them okay so we're not trying to okay i mean right joe yeah i've been i've been watching for the return of christ for eight years the lord gave me a call back in 2012 when i was 22 years old I think around 21 or 22 years old, the Lord gave me a prophecy. I was getting ready for church one morning and um, getting ready for church. And I had a vision and the Lord showed me everything that was going to happen at church that morning. I would get to church. There would be a guest preacher and he was going to have a revival meeting and a altar call. And when he, he began calling the people up and I did not go up, but he pointed to me. He, he called me specifically go to up. go up, to go up. And he asked me a question and I saw this in a vision before it happened. So I was wow. absolutely sure that this would, this, the, the what the Lord was going to tell me through this preacher, it was going to happen because the Lord revealed it to me ahead of time. And so uh, I saw the question he asked me, what do you want from the Lord? And I began thinking about that. I'm like, well, gosh, I'm 21. I don't have a, uh, I need a car. <laughs> I need a car. What do you want from the Lord? And, and then I'm like, well, I think the Lord is showing me this ahead of time, not to ask for something temporary, just like Solomon didn't ask for riches or the death of his enemies, but he asked for wisdom, you know? So I need to ask for something that's a little more significant than a temporary, you know. And um, so I said, well, I, you know, I, I figured out what I wanted to ask for ahead of time. And I, I said, uh, I want the word of the Lord for my life. That's what I want. Awesome. And I got to church and everything happened just the way I saw it. There was wow. a guest preacher there. I didn't know that he, they didn't announce that. That was an, a last minute thing. The pastor brought in this guest preacher it wasn't announced so i didn't have any way of knowing that ahead of time then he did his altar call and he didn't call me up but a, a friend of mine said steve let's go up there i want you to get prayed for so i didn't go up myself the whole point is that i was taken up there by somebody else i didn't go up there by by myself then he looked at me and said what do you want from the lord <laughs> I was like, well, I knew what you're going to ask me. <laughs> I want the word of the Lord for my life. And he said, one day you're going to bring a prophetic word to a nation. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> and uh, here you are. And, you know, that was when I was 21. Then I became a missionary at 23. I've been down here in Mexico for now 28 years. 
I'm 51. I know I don't look a day over 29, but I'm, but, but, uh, but, uh, I've been down here in Mexico for 20. 29, I'm 29. Exactly. Okay. Are you? you no, know, it's cool about, you no, know, it's funny about 29 in Gematria 29 equals 726. <laughs> All right. I, I was raised in apartment 29 by my grandma. Yeah. I, I was, uh, I was raised by a couple of different family members. My calling, I'll tell you real quick. I had a dream when I was 11 years old. I was living with my grandpa and uh, I had really committed my life to God at a young age. Uh, specifically at 11, I went to the summer camp in Vero Beach, Florida called Life or Youth Ranch. And it really impacted my life. I did the overnight camp. And um, one of the weeks during summer, I had a dream when I was living with my grandpa. And in the dream, Jesus baptized me in a river. And when he brought me up out of the river, he said, prepare them. And uh, that was, you know, 20 years ago. And here I am now, you know, so not, not as cool as your story. I didn't predict <laughs> the future or anything, but, um, but yeah, that was my original. That's when Jesus really made his impact. He told me 20 years ago to prepare them. So uh, here I am, you know, doing, doing the best I can too. Well, you know, and it's just the Lord's got his purposes. And, uh, you know, here at the end of time, the Lord has brought us two, two, two brothers together. The Amen. two 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 crew, <laughs> and um, you know the apocalypse too. I waited. I waited for a long time. You know, from whatever it was, 21, 1989, 1990, somewhere in there, and I began praying. Once I received that word, I began praying about how that would happen, and I didn't. You know, it's, I couldn't take it too seriously. Like I didn't leave my job or anything to say I'm going to go become a prophet to the nations um but i just waited on the lord i went and did my fasting and prayer every year especially for that and I waited on the lord and i was in 2012 and it was at the uh this i've shared this a few times but my wake-up call really to this end time uh time that we're in right now came from the uh, from the united nations general um, general session when uh, the president of Iran on the stage of the United Nations declared the coming of the 12th Mahdi. And which ties into Obama also. Mahdi Bar Barack H. Obama equals 666. So he's going to play both roles. He's going to be the Antichrist and their Mahdi. That's why they're going to accept him so much. They're going to think he's their savior. And he, he, uh, he's the one who betrayed Israel. He went and signed an unbreakable alliance and then, did, and then voted against them three and a half years later on resolu resolution 2334. So he's already deceived Israel. He's already betrayed Israel. He said that the greatest sound uh, that he's ever heard in his life is the Muslim call to prayer. Right. Praying five times a day, it's really a, strenuous job he has especially when he has to get in his his round of golf and his press briefings plus he has to pray five times a day he said in one of his in one of his uh white house correspondence dinner jokes right you know so he clear clearly showing himself to be a muslim and um but then the other thing that that the, that uh, the iranian president said was that this this the 12th mahdi will come in the spirit of a girl. And that whole hmm. speech, Joel Rosenberg, if anybody wants to look that up, I'll see if I can find a link for you. Share it in the description box. But Joel Rosenberg did a great uh, coverage of that whole speech that took place in September of 2012. And uh, the presentation of the 12th Mahdi at the United Nations coming in the spirit of a girl. And I immediately, you know, well, I didn't immediately, but it, <clears throat> later, you know, the understanding of the Antichrist being gay. Right. You know? Yeah, the Antichrist will not desire women. And uh, in Gematria, Michelle L. Obama equals 666. So Michael's fake name, Michelle L. Obama is 666. Just another coincidence, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, it's, it's just, it's amazing. You know, from there, from there, the rest is really history. I mean, so 2021, we're seven years from the first blood moon, eight years from Comet Ison, eight years from the great 
uh, the, uh, the unbreakable alliance of Barack Obama, 11 years from Obamacare. Yep. And, he, and here we are. Now it's been a year, world's in lockdown, and uh, Trump said uh, Passover. Passover code is 115. Is this, is this the time? I mean, we could be out of here this weekend. There's no doubt about it. We could be out of here this weekend. Yeah. And then I have, um, I won't, you know, go over the whole thing, but if you just want to check out my channel, my main channel, I did a video last week about why um, I believe March 27th could actually be a secret pie day for the Julian calendar because it's about 13 days off. And uh, just according to some of the numbers, there's some huge stuff with pie day. Just one thing I'll throw out pie day equals four, seven, four, just like a great reset, just like Barack Obama, all four, seven, four, and um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm watching uh, that day for sure. And one more reading in the IPEC goat film, if you look closely at Bush's eyebrow, one eyebrow has Trump on his back and the other eyebrow has a pie sign with the numbers two and seven, which would be pi the 27th. So I'm watching tomorrow for sure, but also the 28th and all the way up until uh, East for sure, this whole Passover week. Yeah. So anyway, have we have we fulfilled our calling to just share what we can share, right, Joe? That's all we Amen. can do. Amen. I think we pretty much covered. That's all we can do. Watch That's and we, wait. That's all That's we can do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I just ready to good, you know, well done, my good and faithful servant. You know, just come into the joy of your Lord. Yep. And goodbye, world. <laughs> 115 Red yep. Sea moment. Let's go. Yep. Pushing away 115, Passover 115, Trinity 115, Lion of Judah 115. It's got to mean something. It's all got to mean something. All right. Well, we're going to end here. And uh, we're just so thankful to be able to share this with everybody. And I'm so glad we did our first uh, meeting yesterday. And that got us. I was able to get my computer all kind of set up to be able to do this and get screen sharing set up and, and um, hopefully everything comes through good with the audio and all right, well, we'll see you guys soon. And uh, hopefully this weekend we'll be up in glory. Just like Jesus said, I will not drink of this cup again in a, until I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. And he said that Amen. on Passover. So I pray this would be the fourth cup of Passover. Be drinking it together with our Lord and Savior in just a few days. If not, Amen. we're going to continue watching and something better. If this wasn't the gold mine we were w waiting for, I have no doubt there will be something better waiting for us. For sure. Okay. God bless everybody. Thanks, Joe, for meet with me and uh, for everything. Yep, take care of me and keep looking up, guys. That's all you can do. Keep looking up. King of Kings is coming very soon. Almost go time. All right. God bless. God bless everybody. <laughs>